Welcome to the Right Time Podcast. The Right Time with Bomani Jones. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Right Time. My name is Bomani Jones. Thanks for listening on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. We are presented by Progressive Insurance. You can send us a tweet at the one 800 flowerscom Twitter feed. That is at Bomani underscore Jones. By the way, tune into an NL Central battle on Sunday Night Baseball as the Cardinals host the Pirates presented by Firestone Tires. Coverage of Sunday Night Baseball begins at 7 p.m. Eastern on ESPN Radio, ESPNRadio.com, and the ESPN app, and at 8 p.m. on ESPN. All right, 888-729-3776. That is our telephone number. As you may have heard, the Chicago Bulls made a trade, sent Jimmy Butler to the Minnesota Timberwolves. There was a pick swap, and also the Bulls got back Zach Levine, Chris Dunn, and uh, Markinen, whose name I still have not learned, whose first name. Like, we've been going through this whole show, called him the homie Markinen. Not once have I bothered to look him up. Just like Shannon, we're not going to let people think that we actually knew how to pronounce your man Frank's last name for France that the Knicks took. I never bothered to look that up either. That's Frank. Frank. That he is. Frankie, baby. Fantastic. Drastic. Try to make dope like Jurassic Frankie. Park did. Frankie Buckets. <laughs> yes, that's, that's totally what he's going to be going. I tell you, I have to tell you a story about this. I'll never forget this. So my name is Bomani, right? And nothing bothers me more than with people when I was younger would be like, so what do they call you, right? Like you can't bother to learn three syllables, right? You can't bother to learn my name. Like it's very important to me. You're not going to be calling me Bo willy-nilly until you learn how to say my name. I feel like you show me that decent bit of respect. Now, um, my parents are professors. We know a lot of folks from the continent. And so, you know, you hear some names. So I remember this one cat, man, he came and introduced us to his sons. Uh, one of them was Udame Kong, and the other one was Nikki May. And I just remember the first time I heard that, because I knew where them boys were from. They're from both off Silver Row in Atlanta. And I just, it almost reflex. I'd be like, hey, man, what they call y'all, man? Because I know they ain't calling y'all these names on these streets, right? Like, I, I was right there. That's how it was with Frank. What they call you? Oh, Frank, cool. That's what you're going to be. You're just going to be Frank. Uh, anyway, the trade was made. Jimmy Butler went to the Timberwolves. The Bulls got back some other things. I really don't think this trade was bad uh, for the Bulls. Uh, we had me and Al Hassan on a little bit earlier, and I did think that he made a very good point that Tom, Thib- Tom Thibodeau is a coach who is acting as an executive, and you got to play on the fact that he's a coach, and you can work a coach because, I mean, is right. The coach is going to be like, look, just give me the guy. I don't care how you do it. Just go ahead and give me the guy, and you can get them to throw all kinds of stuff in there. So his feeling was that the Bulls should have been able to get Thibodeau for more, and that did not happen, right? That's his feeling on the trade. I think that if you're going to trade Jimmy Butler, go ahead and trade Jimmy Butler now. I think they got back two young players that still have some measure of potential. I don't know what to make of Chris Dunn because I wasn't watching enough of their games, right? But I think they did okay there, and I think marketing is good. However... The real fun of this trade is not about the guys that, you know, we talked about that are involved in it. It's the guy left behind, Dwayne Wade. Now, what was it on Tuesday that we heard that uh, Dwayne had told David Aldridge that he was going to do the player option for $24 million? And David Aldridge asked him, what what, do you have a reason that he was going to do that? And he said he had 24 million reasons, which is totally understandable. And I feel like Dwayne Wade is really about to find out how important money is to him. Because if he is there for the whole year for that $25 million, it will not be pleasant. It won't be pleasant at all. Now, I've heard people make the argument that the Bulls are just going to buy Dwayne Wade out. I mean, they might buy him out at some point. But if you know anything about the Bulls and the way that Jerry Reinsdorf runs that operation, Jerry Reinsdorf is not paying Dwayne Wade to go away. Hell no. Reinsdorf is tight, tight with that money. No, that's not going to happen. So Dwayne and Rondo going to be there playing with all these youth, right? Remember Dwayne was talking about, yeah, I don't want to be here. For, I don't want to be here rebuilding. I don't want to be here with a bunch of 21-year-olds. But I do want to make $24 million. Ah, oh, dilemma, dilemma, dilemma. And I got to say, I don't have as much money as Dwayne Wade, but I do admit, I bite my lip for $24 million and play with some dudes that aren't that good. I mean, how many of them games he actually going to play anyway? Only guy for him to hang out with is Rondo, though. You you play, you know, 50-some-odd games if you don't get traded. You make your 24. <laughs> you know, preserve your body, right? Yes. And get ready for the big push, the big free agency push the next summer, right? Like, that's the big thing. We're all talking about when LeBron's a free agent and all these guys and Westbrook and, and all these guys. Wade, after the season, you put your name right in there with him. Okay. 
for these 50 some odd games that you're about to make 24 and some change. So on that, right, it's a very interesting point that you make. Yes, he can make his push for free agency. You know who Dwayne Wade is going to be in that level of free agency? That level of free agency, I am now referring, it happened just in a moment, to something that I wrote in 2010 on the first day of free agency. Right? Because remember, LeBron was a free agent. Wade was a free agent. Bosch was a free agent. Mari Stoudemire was a free agent. Who you waiting on? Carlos Boozer? Joe Johnson? Oh, I forgot. Joe Johnson. was, And Joe Johnson got the most money out of free agency out of anybody. But here's something I wrote. This is the first paragraph. I said, atop every team's wish list in the Ballyhooed free agent class of 2010 is LeBron James. Toward the bottom, perhaps with the same unanimity, is Allen Iverson. You forgot Allen Iverson was a free agent that year, didn't you? Allen Iverson averaged 28 points per game in the 2008 season. 28 points per game in the 2008 season. 26, excuse me, 26.4 games. 26.4 points in the 2008 season. Two years later, he wound up going to Memphis where they barely wanted to sign him, and then he quit his job. That's where Dwayne Wade's going to be in next year's free agency, except not quite in the same situation as Allen Iverson, where you got to go about it in that way. But that's what it's going to be. It's going to be that huge free agency class. And then down to the bottom is Dwayne Wade. Perhaps willing to play for the veterans minimum on LeBron's team, maybe. I don't think he'd do that, though. I think his pride would be too much to do that. Really? After getting this 24 and change this year? But here's the thing. What do Dwayne Wade need to take a, like, $3 million contract for? He's got three rings. Do you know what's better than three rings? Four rings. I mean, what's the difference at that point, though, right? Like, if But he, what's if, the difference? This is the same guy who that when the when the, the Heat <laughs> won their title, when they, the Heat won their second title, when LeBron won his second title, Wade was the guy to let it be known, hey, guys, this is my third with the threes and the yes. Wade with the three. And my new Dick Davis three. You are right. But the difference is he'd be riding not even shotgun on another championship. He'd be riding in the back seat. Like, does he really want to say that he's riding backseat on LeBron's championships? Like, does he really want to say that? Is that enough to have you go wherever LeBron goes? Is that enough? Yep. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I just have a hard time seeing that being important enough to Dwayne, given everything that he has. You're not hearing that, though. Not at all. <laughs> not at all. No, I'm, I'm, after, especially after this year when he's going to get – this is his last really huge big deal, right? Yes. You would imagine. So how much do you think he's really going to get after this this next year? What, somewhere, if he doesn't settle for, say, a $3 million deal, what's he going to get in the 10, maybe no, I'm, $10 million I'm, dollar range? I'm saying he's probably going to retire. Like, oh, retire? I, mean, I hadn't even considered that. I mean, what, dude, Dwayne Wade has played 14 years. Like, he'll be a 15-year vet after this one. Keep playing for what? Like, seriously, like, like, what is there for Dwayne Wade to keep playing for at that point? And we talk about him getting this 24 this year. Yeah, that's more money than he's ever made. Dwayne Wade has made $156 million in the NBA. Excuse me, $179 million in the NBA. You don't need that. He does it. He does it. And I feel like this year with the Bulls, the kind of thing to make you decide I'm too old for this. Like, I feel like he's going to have a real Murtaugh sort of season in 2018 out there playing with the Bulls. I honestly think he finishes the season with them, though. It's, One way or another. Like you're, you're against Reinsdorf in the buyout and having yeah. to pay guys, but how realistic would a trade option be? Oh, there's nobody that will take them. Not in a trade, right? I, like, unless somebody really needs to clear out some salary, but I don't know how much – how much salary would you need to clear out where you're willing to put, give up a guy that – give up whatever that makes the kind of money that Wade makes? Because that thing for the Bulls now is that they get to shed him from the books at the end of the year. So, like, I don't – I have a hard time seeing that going. Now, the thing about the buyout is I can see them buying him out, like, in March or something like that. But they're not going to cut him a check for $24 million to walk away. They're not going to cut him a check for $20 million to walk away. And I don't think that Wade is going to take a check for fifteen million to walk away because that's the thing. Like, how much of his money? Is he going to the Stephon Marbury program? They're going to have to give me all of my money. At which point, there's no point in buying him out. Like, the Knicks had to buy Marbury out because D'Antoni just did not want him around, right? But there's no incentive for the Bulls to give him $24 million to walk away. There's none. Nope, they're going to be like, come see Chicago's own Dwayne Wade because who the hell else are you going to go see in that arena? Also, by the way, check out our Twitter poll on the ESPN Radio Twitter account. That's at ESPN Radio. We're asking who won the Bulls, Timberwolves trade for Jimmy Butler. The Bulls, the Timberwolves, or that's not how trades work. 
Right now, 69% of the audience said the Timberwolves won the trade. Ah. I didn't expect it to be that much. Jeez. I did, though. But you know, NBA, man, you win the trade if you get the best player. Like, that's the way most people look at it. You win the trade if you get the best player. All right, 888-729-3776. That's our telephone number coming up next. Have you ever imagined the possibility of LeBron, Paul George, and Carmelo on the same team? I'll tell you how that maybe, just maybe, was something that could have happened. You're listening to ESPN Radio, the ESPN app, Sirius XM Channel 80. The Right Time with Bomani Jones. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to The Right Time. My name is Bomani Jones. Thanks for listening on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. We are presented by Progressive Insurance. Zach Harper of Fan Rag Sports will join us next segment. Zach Harper will join us at 630 Eastern to talk about that trade the Temple Wolves made to get Jimmy Butler. Nothing makes the summer birthday or anniversary more magical than 1-800-Flowers.com. Right now, when you order a dozen multicolored roses for only twenty nine ninety nine, you'll get another dozen absolutely free. Go to 1-800-Flowers.com slash ESPN. That's the old soul song of the day. Let me turn that up a little bit. That's Betty Wright. Tonight's the night. Figure it's my last day in Miami doing this here show, so I might as well, you know, play a little Miami music. Thought about doing some KC and the Sunshine Band. By the way, randomly, Shannon, I found out that my tailor also outfits KC. Oh? Yeah, dude, I went to meet the tailor. I meet him in a hotel room, and some guy had come in. And I was like, he looks familiar, but I don't know why. And the next time I see my tailor, tailor's an Indian dude. And he was like, yeah, uh, the guy who was here with you is a very uh, famous musician. I was like, really? He's like, yeah, uh, Sunshine Band. Hey. 888-729-3776. That is our telephone number. Now, Stephen A. Smith has a radio show on ESPN Radio that airs from 1 to 3 Eastern. And apparently, Stephen A. was all hopped up to come on the radio. That's what come on the radio. But while on the radio, he said he'd heard something. And he was like, okay, now I am able to tell you what I heard. Now, there's a difference between reporting and hearing. But this is what Stephen A. Smith had to say that he heard. And just so you know, it gets a little loud. The New York Knicks were involved in a mega five-team deal. That would have sent Carmelo Anthony and Paul George to Cleveland. Both of them. And what nixed it up was A, Melo's hesitancy, and B, more importantly, nobody wanted to take Kevin Love's money. Now, I knew about this, but I had to make sure I had permission to say it. And I just received permission to say it. Melo and Paul George was going to end up in Cleveland. Both of them. But the combination of Griffin getting fired, Along with Love's contract, nobody wants, because I've been telling y'all for months, the knee and the back have been issues with Kevin Love. The deal didn't happen. Whoa. Shannon, how you feel, man? I mean, as a, as a Knicks fan, yeah, it would have been something to see Melo go, but I, I just feel cheated that we're not going to get a Melo and Paul George in Cleveland. And LeBron. Oh, yeah, that's I mean, I mean let's not forget that. <laughs> I mean, so here's my thing about, like, what I hear there. On one hand, I'm disappointed because it would have been interesting to see that as the Cleveland Cavaliers. On the other hand, I'm just disappointed I didn't get to come on the radio and talk about that. Can you imagine how crazy that would be for everybody in this business if there were a five-team trade that involved Carmelo Anthony, Kevin Love, and Paul George? And we don't even know who else, because I'm guessing Phoenix would have had to have been involved in that, because everybody was going to Phoenix to get that number four pick to see what they could pull off, because Phoenix felt like they got enough down there where they might be a couple, you know, like the right people come in there, they're in a turn the corner situation, right? And basically, a lot of teams were like, yo, you got to go somewhere to get picks. And Phoenix was the most reliable choice that folks had when they were looking to find somebody that had picks. So, hold on. No, no, I mean, play, play that one more time. I just want to make sure that people heard this about this five-team trade. And just think of how excited you get just hearing about it. The New York Knicks were involved in a mega five-team deal that would have sent Carmelo Anthony and Paul George to Cleveland, both of them. And what nixed it up was, A, Melo's hesitancy, and B, more importantly, Nobody wanted to take Kevin Love's money. Now, I knew about this, but I had to make sure I had permission to say it, and I just received permission to say it. Melo and Paul George was going to end up in Cleveland, both of them. But the combination of Griffin getting fired, along with Love's contract nobody wants, because I've been telling y'all for months the knee and the back have been issues with Kevin Love. The deal didn't happen. Yo. 
Like, how many days of content could we have gotten out of that? Like, if that was like, that would be all we talked about that day if that it ha- if such a thing would ever happen, right? Like, you think about that shit. We do three hours of radio. We would have to stay an extra hour, right? Bonus coverage. <laughs> I gotta be like, Jalen Jacoby, take the night off, fellas. I'll stay till nine. Okay, I would never say that. Um, also, Stephen A, because, hey, yo, Stephen A was just like, yo, man, I can finally tell you these things I've been hearing. How long has Stephen A just been, like, has he just been ready to explode? Because I don't know how long I could have sat on this, right? Like, I'm impressed by the fact that he didn't tell us already. Like, Shannon, you know I tell that story about the whole ship. I, I can't tell the whole ship story on this radio, but I tell the story about the whole ship. I told my homeboy who told me the whole ship story, like, two years later, I was like, look, man, I told a story on the radio. And he goes, you know what? You waited two years. I can't believe you waited that long. That's how I feel that Stephen A, I, I'm impressed that he waited this long. But hold up. Stephen A had heard and told us what he heard, which is not the same thing as reporting, but his is something else that he had heard. Mello and George was one train. Guess who the San Antonio Spurs called? The New York Knicks. And said they were willing to move Kawhi Leonard and clean house. But then they stepped back from it and changed their mind. These are all the things that I knew over the last couple of days. I couldn't say it. Couldn't say it. But I got it confirmed just a few minutes ago. Yet again, things are getting very, very interesting. Okay. If that were true, right? If that were the case, is that not a fascinating window? Or would that not be a fascinating window into how the Spurs view the roster that they have right now? Right? Like, if they were to look and say, all right, let's get Kawhi out of here, and then let's figure it out from there. Because I'm assuming Porzingis was going to be involved in this if they were going to do that. Like, you can't trade Kawhi to the Knicks unless you're getting back Porzingis. By the way, Kawhi, silent superstar in New York City. Interesting match. Um, is he at once? Could he possibly, though, be the perfect New York superstar because it'll never be a thing, and you can never make it a thing? Because he's just going to be like, yes, no. And he's only 25. He's only 25. In his prime. He's only, not even at the prime. Oh. We're approaching prime, Shannon. You would have put a stamp on Porzingis to get him? Absolutely. <laughs> Next day, whatever you need, I'll take it there myself. <laughs> but I, say, I, will, I will hitch up a trailer if I've got to and pull this thing. It would have worked for both squads, especially if San Antonio's in the, re- the rebuild, complete rebuild in New York. As we know, not the most patient place in the world. And you get a ready-made star right now who plays both ways. Oh, I am fascinated, though, by the idea that maybe the Spurs are looking at what they got, and they're like, nah, man, this ain't going to cut it. Right? Like, maybe, like, if that were the case, like, nah, man, they, they, this didn't, this ain't. Keep it in mind, again, that we're hearing about the Spurs being in there on Chris Paul. By the way, we are at my favorite time of breaking news, by the way, where you're going to see a lot on SportsCenter at the bottom of the screen. Breaking news, NBA players aren't morons, which is Blake Griffin opts out of his contract. Hey, Chris Paul, outside of his cut. Co- Breaking news. Breaking news. Can we go back really quickly to to the trade, the, sure. the, the first trade, the the, the the proposed five de- five team trade that sure. would Cleveland would have landed Paul George and Melo. Yes. Um. Wow. So, so does Melo start in that situation? I think Melo comes off the bench. Really? I think Melo has to come off the bench. He didn't play enough defense. Paul George comes off the bench. I mean, Paul George starts. LeBron starts. Tristan Thompson, I guess, next to him. Also, by the way, that Kevin Love thing, the thing that Stephen A pointed out is something I'd heard before, too. The big concern that people have about Kevin Love is they don't think that he can physically hold up. Like, that's the big one. Like, people feel like he's damaged goods already at age 28. But yeah, Shannon, your Knicks might have been involved in some big-time stuff. Instead, they still the Knicks. You got Frank. Frank. Frank, Frank. Y'all got Frank, Frank. 888-729-3776. That's our telephone number. Coming up next, how much better is Jimmy Butler going to make the Timberwolves? We'll talk to Zach Harper of Fan Rag Sports about that on ESPN Radio, the ESPN app, Sirius XM Channel 80. We've been talking a lot about Upside.com, telling you it will save you or your company big on business travel and that you'll get a big gift card every trip you buy. Sounds too good to be true, right? Nah, go to Upside.com and check it out. Super fast searches, by the way. For instance, in less than two minutes, you can have a few awesome choices on American Airlines flights to Chicago at the end of next month that work for you. 
and a bunch of big name hotels. Your options could get you a $268 gift card and save your company $268. Take a business trip? You'd be crazy not to use Upside. Spend less of your company's money, get more rewards for yourself, and get excellent customer service. Upside's the real deal. You may wind up with a $268 gift card. Trust me, go to Upside.com today. Plus, you use promo code BOMANI, you're guaranteed to get at least a $100 Amazon gift card your first trip. That's code BOMANI to get a $100 gift card free. Say big on travel and get a big gift card every trip. See what your next trip's worth today. Upside.com. That's Upside.com. Minimum purchase required. See site for complete detail. The Right Time with Bomani Jones. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to The Right Time. My name is Bomani Jones. Thanks for listening on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. All guests join us on the Shell Pencil Performance Line, just like our next guest. He covers the NBA for Fan Rag Sports. His name is Zach Harper. Uh, now, Zach, you spent a lot of time around the Minnesota Timberwolves. Before we get to the specific Timberwolves part of it, how surprised were you to find out that the Bulls would do a deal with Tom Thibodeau? Extremely. I was, I was telling everyone there's no way. Like, we went through this last year with the story of, oh, there's, they're close to a, a trade. They're, going, they're approaching a trade. They, they, these two sides hate each other. They're very petty. They were throwing, you know, these crazy rumors at each other a year ago. So I thought, oh, here we go again. This is just, just going to be a yearly thing between Tom Thibodeau and the Bulls. And then the trade happens. So what do you think about this for the Timberwolves side first? All right. I think, Zach, we still got you? Uh, maybe we don't. All right. That's Zach Harper from Fan Rag Sports. I imagine that Zach will be rejoining us shortly to find out what he thinks about how this worked out for the Timberwolves on their side of the trade. Uh, in the meantime, I'll just use this as an opportunity once again to remark what John Paxson has become. All right, like, I mean, you remember John Paxson playing in the NBA. Go ahead and call up a picture of John Paxson when he played for the Bulls. Now pull up a picture of this new John Paxson, all ball-headed and swole, looking like he carried a briefcase. But to be clear, I want to say what briefcase it is. It's not simply a briefcase. It's a briefcase with the hard-on-the-outside kind of briefcase, the one that they seem to only sell for you to pop open and have large amounts of cash inside. Like that's what John Paxson has been giving me lately, at least in terms of his appearance. Like, you know what John Paxson looked like? John Paxson strike me as the dude that has a whole lot of dress shirts that are blue on the bottom and white on the collar. Yeah, you know that guy. You know that dude. All right, 888-729-3776. That is our telephone number. Get instant gold status at Shell. Join the Fuel Rewards program now at fuelrewards.com slash gold. All right, and there is Zach Harper back with us now. We talk about the Jimmy Butler trade. How do you think it worked out for Minnesota? It's a it's a no brainer for Minnesota. I mean, they, like Jimmy Butler solves so many problems because he's a go to scorer for them. He's a guy who defends. He's a guy who will mentor Andrew Wiggins and make him put in the extra work. He understands the system. He can explain the system. We saw so much regression last year with the Wolves defensively, even when they had these good moments. They would regress because they're young guys and they didn't really know how to keep that focus. Now they have a veteran on the court to keep that focus for them and keep everything moving forward. You would think it would show a huge improvement, at least on the defensive end of the floor, because it's a guy who understands what Tom Thibodeau wants. Now, do you worry about the fact that he's not a great three-point shooter and neither is Wiggins? Well, Wiggins did have a big improvement last year, and I don't know that it means he's going to have another big improvement this year, but he did up his percentage by about 5%, which is pretty big. He was a little bit below – a, a league average three-point shooter. I think he can build on that. The weird thing with Jimmy Butler is it goes like horrible year, incredible year, horrible year, incredible year, horrible year. Like he just kind of has this real roller coaster three-point percentage from year to year. You just just have to hope that you get him at the right year and that he can actually hit shots. Because if he can't hit shots and you don't trade Rubio and Wiggins doesn't improve, if Carl Anthony Towns is your best shooter, that's not great. Now, how do you feel about this on the Bulls end? It's it's, uh, you know, it's about what you'd expect out of the Bulls management at this point. I don't think it's a great trade. I think, you know, Laurie Markkinen, he's a nice player. He can shoot. Um, Zach Levine, once he comes back from the knee, the, the ACL surgery, um, I, think he's, I think he showed so much improvement the last year and a half that you can feel good about him. But you still, you know, you come into it with not only is he going to, going to have to recover from an ACL injury, but he also has to do it at a time where he's eligible for an extension off his rookie deal. So you don't get a lot. You don't get any time to see him on the court before you have to make that decision. And now you're going into restricted free agency with him, and you probably have to commit to paying like twenty million a year just to keep him and, and show that you got something out of this trade. All right, we're talking to Zach Harper of Fan Rag Sports on the right time. So, like, if Jim, if everything goes best case scenario, you get a great season out of Jimmy Butler with the team that Minnesota has put together. 
I assume this is a playoff team, but how good do you think they'd be in the West? I mean, for them to be a playoff team, like their offense was incredible last year. They showed some really great stretches, but they still they have no depth. They have they still have to figure out their point guard position. They still have to figure out if they can shoot threes outside of a couple of players. They still have to figure out if if they can play team defense. They're gonna you know they're gonna pursue some stretch fours in free agency. They're gonna pursue George Hill in free agency. Like they're gonna try to keep bringing in veterans they couldn't get a year ago. But you know for them to for them to make the leap in the West and get better than the Pelicans, get better than the Nuggets, get better than you know Portland and all these teams that were fighting for the eighth the eighth seed. That, that that needs a significant improvement just in leadership on the court, and that's something they didn't always have last year. So I think they can't play off the We don't know what their roster is really going to look like. Well, I think something else that has to be addressed there is where are Wiggins and Towns in their development? Because we're all very excited about what they could be, but I feel like most people haven't actually watched the Timberwolves game. Me. They, I mean, it, I think a lot more people will watch Timberwolves games now. Like that could be that could be like people might actually know that there's a team in Minnesota that you just don't like you don't get to the draft lottery and you're like oh right the Timberwolves are in the league like you may actually get some star power there get some more national gains and if you get into the eighth seed I don't know maybe it's a maybe it's a situation where not only is it hey the Minnesota Timberwolves are alive but it's maybe I want to play for the Minnesota Timberwolves some year because they have Jimmy Butler and Carl Anthony Towns is really good and maybe Wiggins is the same yeah now what kind of ceiling has women's Wiggins demonstrated since you've seen him in the league. I'm sorry, you dropped out there. What, what was the question? Yeah, I said, what kind of ceiling has women, Wiggins demonstrated since he's made the league? I mean, with Wiggins, it's he's good and bad at the same time. It's a weird thing. Like, with, with Wiggins, like, he, he can be a good on-ball defender. Like, they have him guard James Harden, Chris Paul, Jimmy Butler when he was on the Bulls. Like, they had him guard all the best scorers on the other team. But then off the ball, it looks like he's, he's you know, getting into the whole DNP rest thing where he just sleeps off the ball and doesn't – and you, you can back door cut on him. You can get – three-point shots against him, and, and there isn't really that focus and that, that consistency. And the offensive end of the floor, like he's still kind of learning how to dribble, which isn't a great thing to say about an NBA player, but he still has to kind of learn how to attack. He has to learn how to find passes out of that. I do think there's been a big improvement from last year in all those things, but it almost reminds me a lot of Paul George a few years ago before he really became a superstar, where it was like, hey, if Paul George learns how to attack this area of the floor and knows where to go from that with the other areas of the floor – then he can become a superstar. Andrew Wiggins is sort of in that same boat of he's still trying to figure out where to get on the floor and then what to do once he's there. All right, that is Zach Harper. Check him out, fanbragsports.com, covering the NBA. Thanks so much, my man. I appreciate it. Thanks, anytime. All right, now, 888-729-3776. That is our telephone number. Coming up next, who won the Timberwolves Bulls trade? We'll go to our Twitter poll and give you the answer on ESPN Radio, the ESPN app, Sirius XM Channel Lady. The Right Time with Bomani Jones. We know you can't be on top of all the news and information of the day. Now, if you haven't heard. The big news out of last that came out of last night's tra- the draft was obviously the trade of Jimmy Butler to Minnesota. Where it would appear that the Timberwolves have a grown-up now, which is not the worst thing in the world. And if you haven't heard, here's Bomani Jones earlier today on The Right Time discussing the Jimmy Butler trade. I think you make that trade every time if you're Minnesota. Suddenly, if you're a Minnesota Timberwolves fan... You got a team worth watching, right? Like, not just watching, oh, man, what this is going to be down the line. You got a team worth watching right now. Right? Jimmy Butler, Carl Towns, and uh, Andrew Wiggins? Yeah, I'll watch that team. Like, this is a playoff team. Now, I've seen the question raised, does this make Minnesota a contender in the West? Guys, there is one contender in the West. There are not two contenders in the West. There is one contender in the West. So, no, this does not make them the Golden State Warriors. But does it make them a playoff team in the West? I mean, I'd say probably, right? Like, assuming that you're going to get improvement from Wiggins, assuming you're going to get improvement from Carl Anthony Towns, you're adding Jimmy Butler. So the eighth seed last year was Portland. I feel like this team could be as good as Portland was. I mean, be, be as good as Portland. You think they could be as good as Memphis? I think they could be as good as Memphis. Oklahoma City is there in the six. Like, I don't know, again, if this makes Minnesota a 50-win team, but I think it definitely puts Minnesota in a place where they win in the 40s. And if you're a Timberwolves fan, you're happy with that, right? All right, when's the last time? Let me go look at this right now in the full list. When's the last time that the Minnesota Timberwolves even got a whiff of mediocrity? Just a taste of mediocrity. Because I don't feel like they've had a great deal of experience with mediocrity. Are the Timberwolves a shoe in to make the playoffs next year? A uh, shoe in is a little bit of a stretch, but I feel like they're in a position where they should be a playoff team. 
or at the very least should be a legitimate playoff contender. But as we talked about, there's a chance for some real upheaval in the West, depending upon how free agency shakes out. So after free agency, I think we'll get a better handle. All right, our Twitter poll today on ESPN Radio Twitter account, the question was, who won the Jimmy Butler trade? And the options were the Bulls, the Timberwolves, or the third option was, that's now not how trades work. And the winner, of course, 70% said that the Timberwolves won the trade. 22% of the audience voted for that's not how trade works. So kudos to them for understanding Yes, and apparently no kudos for the Bulls. Yeah, it's rough. That doesn't sound like there's a lot of percent left for the Bulls. That has to be expected, though, after the day after you trade the star player. I'd imagine that that would uh, reflect how the uh, Bulls fans are feeling right now. Yeah, sorry about that, fellas. It'll be okay. You you guys got something in return. It's not (laughs) not the worst thing in the world. (laughs) So last night, uh, Markel Fultz goes number one overall to the Philadelphia 76ers. The Sixers, the process, it's here. It's about time. All the great stuff. You got Embiid. You got Sarchik. You got um, you got uh, now Fultz. You got Simmons, number one pick last year. You have all of these young talents. It's time to put it together. And you know the one guy who I feel sorry for? Mm. Jaleel Okafor. <laughs> Not one mention of Okafor <laughs> last night. When you talk about all of these pieces, yeah, he made, a, made you may have seen him on a graphic at one point in time on the screen. But when they talk about all of these pieces and these great things and this bright future, Okafor's name, nowhere to be mentioned. Man, life come at you fast. Like, you got to realize, we spent all of Okafor's one season at Duke thinking Okafor was going to be the number one overall pick in the draft. That didn't happen. He wasn't even the number two overall pick in the draft. He was The the dude that went number two already got traded. And the Sixers are like, we would have traded you two if we could find anybody to take you. I thought they needed to sell high on him and early, and they just kept him around. And I was just like, you're never going to be able to move him now. All right. Uh, it, it's already been announced that the uh, uh, Paul, Chris Paul excuse me, and Blake Griffin with the Clippers have both opted out of their deals. No surprise there. Are you shocked, though, that we're not hearing more about Blake Griffin? It's been kind of quiet, though. Like you've, heard, you've heard about Paul. Excuse me. You heard about Paul with San Antonio, but you haven't heard much about Griffin. I don't know. We heard about Boston talking about maybe signing Blake Griffin. Like, we have heard that one. I think that people have started this with a presumption that Blake Griffin was not going to lead the Clippers, but I don't feel like anybody has any real idea what's going to happen with the Clippers. I certainly don't feel like I do. Um, But Blake's in an odd place now, man, because he has stepped his game out. He can spread the floor a little bit, but he's not shooting the threes at this point, and he's at that point in his career, but dudes like him stop doing all that damn jumping. So, like, what is Blake Griffin in the future? And I think that with what the league has become now, is Blake Griffin the guy that could be your number two on a championship team? That's going to be the question that everybody has to answer. No team that can use him that needs a number two. <laughs> That'd be the Knicks. I mean, them two, they, can, they need a two, three, four, five. He'd be there at one. He'd be there half. They need a, yeah, they need a two, three, four, five, one, all of those. He'd be a fraction. But, but a lot of people have said, well, what about Oklahoma City? Granted, Blake's from Oklahoma, and Russell Westbrook needs a number two. So what about the Thunder? Yeah. Um, why would Blake Griffin do that? <laughs> that? That's my only question. Well, he's from there. Y'all from a bunch of places y'all ain't trying to go back to. And then last and certainly not least, Derek Carr got his money, and at his press conference today, he took a couple shots. Take a listen. My number one goal is that I make sure that I give everything I have to this organization. So there's no pressure. There's no, you know, we'll be on the one-yard line, and I won't give it to Marshawn. I'll throw it. You know, it's not, none of that stuff. I don't care about the stats. <laughs> you know, I don't <laughs> Uh, that's not my number one objective. I don't care if I throw 10 touchdowns next year. If we win every game, that's all I care about. You hear that? So if we're on the one-yard line, you don't have to worry about me passing it and not giving it to well, Marshawn. We act like Russell Wilson did that on his own, right? <laughs> anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us here on The Right Time. We do this every weekday, 4 p.m. Eastern, except I'm taking a couple of weeks off. Shannon, Nuno, Steven, thanks so much. Jalen and Jacoby are coming up next. Thanks for listening to The Right Time Podcast. Please come back Monday for more. And don't forget to listen to The Right Time with Bomani Jones from 4 p.m. to 7 Eastern on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. And now, insurance-minded speeches from GEICO. Let's talk about power. To illustrate this, allow me to tell you a story about how I moved a tow truck 25 miles using only my index finger. I was stranded with a flat tire. I opened the GEICO app. Then, with a few taps of my finger, I beckoned emergency roadside assistance and a tow truck to my car. I invite you all to unleash the full potential of your fingertips with the GEICO app. Thank you.